Cindy Levy is the former editor in chief of Glamour and Self. And last summer, she wrote a very personal piece for the New York Times titled Let's Talk About My Abortion and Yours. So, Cindy, a pleasure. Thank we'll get you. into. I remembered that piece and I wanted to talk to you today. But first, just on the news. When you first woke up and saw this news on Alabama, what, what, what did you think? I saw it last night and it's horrifying. It's disheartening. I mean, first of all, it goes against what most Americans believe about the right of a woman and her family and her doctor to make the most personal decisions a, a woman can make. About two thirds of Americans, depending on which survey you look at, believe that Roe v. Wade should remain the law of the land. So these bills, the Alabama bill being, of course, the most restrictive abortion ban we've ever seen, but the so-called heartbeat bills that came before them in no way represent what the majority of Americans believe about how these personal decisions should get made. Do you think, given these various states and what's happening, do you think that the reversal of Roe v. Wade is inevitable? I think that these laws are these laws are being passed specifically to try to get to that point. I mean, it's very clear in the state of Alabama that they made a concerted decision, those mm -hmm. lawmakers that backed the bill, and we just saw them in the Senate. It was 25 white male Republicans who voted for the Originally bill. Originally sponsored, though, by a, by a woman. woman in the House. It's true. That was the Senate that we were looking at. Um, the bill itself was largely written by an unelected activist, an anti-choice activist who has been trying to overturn Roe v. Wade for 30 years now, who saw a window and and when asked by a reporter, why not just do a heartbeat bill, just do a heartbeat bill, he said, well, why not go all the way? Meaning, we need this to get up to the Supreme Court so that the new makeup of the court, he hopes, will overturn Roe v. Wade. And of course, one very much hopes that that will not happen because it will result in death for many women. For many women. I want to read part of what you wrote in the New York Times last year. Quote, would it be quite so easy to demonize this common experience if it were clear that the women who have gone through it include kindergarten teachers, clergy women, Republicans, CEOs, the woman who served your coffee this morning, who cleaned your house, who signed your paycheck, who patrols your neighborhood? As the activist Renee Bracey Sherman, who runs the We Testify site, put it, everyone loves someone who has had an abortion, and if you think you don't, they just haven't shared their story with you yet. You know, women don't talk about this for so many reasons because it is so intense private and personal. And, and we shouldn't have to talk about it, right? I mean, in fact, the constitutional right to privacy is what Roe v. Wade is based on. Yeah. But I think, you know, I felt that there are, and many women before me who have spoken out very bravely about this, felt that there's so many stereotypes and myths out there about the kinds of women who choose abortion. It's very easy to demonize people when they're anonymous. For instance, you know, we think that women who choose abortion are selfish or unmaternal. And the reality is that the majority of women Go on make to have this kids. choice. No, they already have kids. The majority of women who choose to have an abortion already have children and often are doing it to protect their ability to be a present parent, a healthy parent, a living parent for that child that they already have. And, and also there's a stereotype that women regret their abortions, right? That this causes a lifetime of shame or pain as it sometimes does on TV shows. Mm -hmm. But in reality, 95% of women say that they would make the same choice again. Not that it's always an easy choice for many women. It's extremely, extremely difficult, but it is a choice that 95% would make again. And I think we need to believe that we, and I count myself among the one in four women who has made this choice, Choice, that we have moral compasses, that we are in the best position to decide what happens with our bodies, with our lives, and what happens with the futures of our families. Cindy Levy, using her voice, thank you very much for coming on. Thank you. Bob. I appreciate it.